And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Averrosen Fury for our first deck of the day. We're back on over in ranked, going to be playing some more uh, donation decks. We got a bunch of fun ones. This one we are going to be uh, attacking, got a bunch of Overwhelm, and we'll just be smashing them with Battle Fury and Overwhelm. We have uh, Trindamir, Ancient Yeti, Sejuani, Darius, Alpha Wildclaw. Lots of good stuff there. And uh, we are in Averrosen um, Allegiance deck. We're going to be a Freljord Allegiance deck. So we have the Averrosen Outriders. That's also a, an Overwhelm that will grant the top ally in our deck. Plus three, plus three, and Overwhelm as well. So it's, it's all about going big with this deck. The Averrosen Hearthguards are in here to help us go big. And that's like the, the perfect thing that can happen. Is that if we play an Averrosen Outriders on turn four. And then turn five we draw... Avros and Hearthguard that got the plus three plus three and now it's an eight eight uh, overwhelm that is amazing. Um, but the other cool part about like our av like all these Avros and cards together is we have the Avros and Trapper that we can kind of set up. Like this is a good um, card to go with the Outriders, right? Like if we play like the the Trapper on turn three and put the Enraged Yeti on top of our deck, and then maybe turn four we don't draw the Enraged Yeti yet, but we draw something else. We play the Outriders. And then the Enraged Yeti is now our top card. And now we're drawing a one mana 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelm. Um, that's a really cool little combo there, too. So, like, these, all three of these Averrosen cards work very well together. Um, and then, you know, like, we just got some got some uh, good interaction with the Ice Veil Archer. Makes stuff larger with Omen Hawk. Ruthless Raider doing its thing. Splashing Noxus just for Culling Strike. Very good removal spell. And then one Darius to, instead of the third at Trindomir. So only four Noxus cards, of course, because we want to be hitting that allegiance so let's give it a try we got Averroes and fury to start our day off we'll head on over to the freljord okay fiora shen this isn't like the worst hand just to keep all the way around tavern keeper doesn't really do too much though so i can definitely mulligan that um and, I don't know, like, Sejuani's really good, but we we don't have the attack token on turn 6. So this would be, like, a turn 7 Shivan or Sejuani. Alright, so I sent the, the Sejuani back. Because we do have a high curve in the stack, it's not too difficult to find another, and that's what we did. You're covered. We're gonna save the spell mana. We'll save this Icefell Archer for later. I pass they they pass that's not necessarily the worst thing for me if I ice fill archer I guess I'll just do that basically they'd have to use like in order to get a kill they'd have to use like sharp sight and then I would, I would replace I would trade sharp sight for troll chant So that just saved me five life, and you know we traded Troll Chant for Sharp Sight. We fight for one frail yard. And I, I didn't play these. I wanted to save mana for Troll Chant, um, and un unfortunately Omen Hawk just isn't really a good card to play against Fiora. I 
I know, right? We haven't played enough Avaros in Hearthguard recently. I walk the space between worlds. So if I play Sejuani, that keeps them from attacking and bear barrier barrier barriering. But I would rather have the Sejuani on my attack turn, of course. Enforced equilibrium. Fight or die. Yeah, probably just can't play Omen Hawk, unfortunately. Okay, so that means that we do have Sejuani's Fury of the North available now. Glad that wasn't reposed. If only Fiora could see me now. She can. She's not impressed. I guess we'll just play the the ancient Yeti to keep Fury of the North available. They've used two concerted strikes. For the thrill of battle. We are whittling down their cards pretty good. No, I'm not going to try to play around Judgment. If they have Judgment, I'm Precision pretty dead. Grace. I, don't, I don't think there's a good way for me to play around it. Enough stalling. It's like, if it's Judgment, they would just play it immediately, right? Like, it wouldn't take this much time to think about it. It's probably single combat. <laughs> Not the worst. Because we have Trindamir and they have nothing. So we're doing okay. Have a Rose and Fury. Wanna know? That's true. Never did. This deck's probably going to be pretty good. Diana and Zoe are amazing. You get Shadow Isles in there. Great region. This turn we do have the attack token on turn 6. So actually I think I'm going to keep the Sejuani for the attack token on turn 6. Um, yeah, so do I want to keep Hearthguard... I mean, Hearthguard is just always awesome. I'm always happy to have it. Sure. Fight or die. 
All right, we're gonna try to race. Night flowers upon my blade. We will resist. That's actually a pretty decent Omen Hawk draw to kind of fit this curve. Really, we want to draw spells right now, like uh, Troll Chant, Culling Strike, that kind of stuff. We go where the War Mother bids. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Okay, cool. That's something to use our spell mana on. So that's good. Many tribes under one banner. Well met, Outland Key. Yeah, like this Zoe's already created three super cool star charts. They're just gonna have a ton of spells, so you know, cards like you know, even though we can pump up some stuff, like they're gonna have like Equinox and stun cards and things like that, most likely. You own what you take. No, not at all sideways. Yeah, Crescent Strike, that's a stun card. Man, I'm sorry, Agent Iowa, on a big losing streak. I'm sorry about that. So if they're passing to me... That means they have Diana. So I don't want to play the Darius, because I want to have this Ice Veil Archer available. Okay, they just went with that. This land is ours. I guess they have Hush also, don't they? They have 10 cards in hand? I guess I, sh I should have just passed. Yep, there's the Equinox. That's Zoe for you. So he's pretty good. So they did have the Equinox and the Crescent Strike, both from Zoe. And also the Serpent. Alright, so... Man, they are a Hush deck too, so like our, our Battle Fury isn't going to be as useful either, because they are a Hush deck. I can go I can go Ice Veil Archer on the 8-7 and then have you know decent attacks with these things. But I think I just wait. Oh yeah, that's a pretty sparkle. I can have another Equinox or Crescent Strike now. I have my order. GG's. Things really lined up for them that game. No, no, no frostbite. No, we we don't have any frostbite. Uh, I mean, well, I guess we do. Like the two, that three one, right? That three one is frostbite. So yeah, never mind. I was thinking like the burst speed frostbite cards. We don't have those. All right, good hand. I like it. Let me at him. Coming in. 
you have a lot of essence and you don't know what to do with it, then yeah, the probably just the best thing to do is just to hold on to it then, right? Then uh you know it's not it's not a resource that you necessarily have to spend right away. Leave nothing standing. Alright, we will attack. We're going to have to turn three Omen Hawk, at least the last two games. Um, actually, let's just attack right now. No fear. Hey, what's up, Jan? Nothing can stop us. I guess you've been here. You're just saying hi to Talamari. Never lost a fair game or played one. I'm a people person. Cooling strike. We haven't actually drawn a cooling strike yet in any of these games. Is obsolete. The War Mother will unite us all. Warm greetings to your brothers. Their own Avros and Hearth Guard. Alright, that thing's pretty big. The War Mother will unite us all. Do I attack with the other two also? Today we fight as one. Yeah. So ordinary. This is our homeland. Back it up. Yeah, Terrence of Improvement is a great card. We played like that uh, Ezreal Twisted Fate deck yesterday, and that was something I talked... We only had two in our deck, and I talked about that afterwards, how it needs to be a three of. I've been very impressed with that card. That's their third Fizz. They had all three Fizz. Seven. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's go get him. We'll have our Battle Fury. That was a that was a great draw, that Battle Fury, honestly. Rummage has a lot of potential for them. If they can draw another card, they can level up Twisted Fate, then if they can play three spells after that, then they get Gold Card. Gold Card stops my Battle Fury. Okay. So we should be good. That will not stop... Oh my gosh! Why did why did I just do that? 
I was thinking I could cast both. I couldn't cast both. I, I mean, it's still lethal, but I don't know why I was thinking that I had, I had eight and two with my mana. I could just cast both of them. I was going to do that on that one and then Battle Fury on the other one. I should have just done the Battle Fury, though. <laughs> oh, well, it's still lethal, but... That's, like, way less cool of a lethal, though. That's not, like, you know, the Fury part. <laughs> okay, so let's trade out Fizz for Gangplank. Those three Fizz didn't do a whole lot last time. Gangplank's probably going to be doing more. I do not have the attack token on turn six. I think I'm going to mulligan both champions. Because we'll probably draw another one. Whoa, Cooling Strike. That card's in our deck? I forgot about that one. parlay um one yeah that's a good parlay for them the good thing for us is that it is dealing damage to us on a turn that i was already taking damage anyway so the parlay didn't help the gangplank level up great zizu good job for silver i talk for gold i miss it guess might as well use this now so we can bank this one spell mana for later I think we need to draw Avaros and Trapper a little bit more. We haven't had very good turn threes. I don't change fate, but I can see it. System upgrade. All right, I can either make the next thing in my deck even even larger by going with the Outriders, or I go with the Hearth Guard. I think the Hearth Guard's better. Yeah, I think I want to go Hearth Guard. Many tribes under one banner. Well met, Outland King. Safety is engaged. Rise, Metal Brethren. <laughs> Surround them. This is outrage. Well, there goes my Gangplank Blocker. And the Gangplank Blocker is back. Alright, so Yeti plus Outriders or just Hearthguard. If I just go Hearthguard next turn, then we can go we can do Sejuani plus Culling Strike. Or I guess Sejuani plus Ancient Yeti even. Many tribes under one banner. Well met, Outland Key. The the one thing though is like I'm basically not really getting any bonus from this other Outriders because we're not really playing, you know, because I'm playing all this other stuff instead. But then again, we are getting the Hearthguard bonus. Yeah, it's a well-fed Hearthguard. Yeah, it's just such a sick combo, those two together. I mean, I guess this is just... I should maybe just go for lethal with just, like, the Battle Fury on the Hearth Guard right now. How do they stop that? So that's seven. That's 17 Overwhelm damage. Plus I have another 3 here, so we have 20 Overwhelm damage. They can get rid of this 3. But how do they stop that 17? Um, like, they can block for two, which is only, you know, which would still put them at negative one. I don't think they can stop this. Stand together. 
And I have to do it before blocks, because maybe they just don't block and they just take nine. So I have to do it right now. You know, obviously I could have played the the Ancient Yeti first, but if I play Ancient, Ancient Yeti first, they can go Twisted Fate Gold card and stun, and that's how they could stay alive. There you go. Alright, we're playing some aggro with Jinx Draven. Alright, so the problem with Culling Strike... Culling Strike doesn't, like, kill either of these champions, right? Like, it doesn't... It doesn't kill either one. Um, but it's a good card. Like, it can it can kill other stuff, but it usually trades down on mana, right? Like, the the Arena Battlecaster is, like, the best thing to Culling Strike, but then that's a 2-2. A two -two. I guess, actually, let's... Cause we have Troll Chant, so let's, let's keep it with the Troll Chant. So we can, we can probably kill the champion with the Troll Chant and the Culling Strike together. Take three. If I would play Icefill Archer here, I would Frostbite the 1-1 one, one, and then block the 2-2. Two, two. But with having these spells, I'm just going to save the spell mana. Patience. Yeah, discard aggro can, can be pretty gross when they got their stuff. The trail. Right, so that makes their crowd favorite worse, getting rid of the one one. So I like that. Uh, so why do they block? I don't know. Like, it's possibly a mystic shot. All right, so I get to triple spell this turn. It's Draven time. Take those trades, kill this thing, then we'll play Enraged Yeti, next turn we'll play Hearthguard. can definitely be useful taking down a Jinx with Troll Chant and Culling Strike combo. Alright, so we both have six cards. They have a whole lot more mana. So that's five mana, so that, that takes up my whole turn to go Troll Chant Culling Strike. The answer is here somewhere. That, that Culling Strike was a great draw, because that leveled up Jinx would be rough. Okay, and so that was a, a Jinx's get excited, so a Jinx will be shuffled back into their deck. So, I mean, not, not the worst for them still. Basically, I'm only up two mana, but we're both at three cards. Even board. But I got some powerful ones, but they're not ones I can double spell with. Okay, I can double spell with that. So... Darius or Hearthguard? Hearthguard gets blocked easier, but 
it's better to play the hearth guard earlier, you know, to get the, the extra hearth guard bonus. I'll go with it. That's a really good sign for me. So that, that's basically saying that everything else in my hand is a spell. It's the only reason to play this is your first unit is everything else is a spell in hand. Okay. So yeah, this is a very good sign for me. Discarded that survival skills to keep it alive. But unfortunately, they top deck to Jinx. <laughs> it was it was great, you know. Everything was great for me until top deck Jinx. Kappa, getting that second month going on. Thank you so much for that resub. Let's get some hype in the chat. Is that our first sub of the day? It looks like it. Yes. All right. First sub of the day. Try me. All right. I'll take 9-9 Trindamir. I don't want to take five damage, especially if they're going to have the ability to make these, um, these things that do like four damage to me. It's either we could, you know, get rid of like the sixth one that doesn't attack that well. Oh, right. I kind of forgot that that's how Trindamir works. My bad. I probably sound pretty dumb right now. <laughs> right, that's how Trindamir works. They never stood a chance. Huh. Okay, so that that ended up being a little bit easier than I thought, like with that Trindamir block. Um, you can you can kind of tell that I don't play Trindamir that often. I, I forgot that it was going to do that. I was just thinking that I was, uh, you know, letting it kill the 8-4, and then, right, it comes back at the 9-9 and stays in combat. Uh, so that was, like, a much easier decision <laughs> uh, than I realized. But um, that was really nice, having culling strikes. Those those last two games, especially that last game, having those culling strikes, they were they were awesome. Killed the Draven, killed the Jinx. Um, they were really, really good. That was a card that we were missing with our uh, one loss earlier. But uh, yeah, you can you can kind of just see how uh, this deck's solid. Like just having really large units is is really good. And and I know like each time that we've ever played this kind of Avaros and Fury deck, we've always done it pretty well. Always had good records with it. It just um, you know it's not the easiest to deal with. Now you know we did run into like that that Zoe deck. Like I said, we didn't have the Calling Strike, but they they could deal with my stuff because they had Hush and Equinox and Crescent Strike, and they had a lot of those because they kept hitting me with Zoe. So that's that's the kind of matchup that can be tougher if, you know, the cards don't go your way like that. But still, that's not, like, an unwinnable matchup or anything. Um, I You know, of course, I like Battle Fury. I really like the, the Ancient Yetis in here. Sejuani was amazing. Um, but then our Averrozen cards were great. Trapper, um, we saw during kind of, like, the middle games, like games like 2, 3, uh, we didn't have turn three Trapper, and uh, our turn threes were kind of weak without it. Uh, I guess I didn't have, like, Tavern Keeper either. We didn't really have much on the turn three. But when we did have Trapper, um, it looked really good. We basically always had the Avros and Outriders, and it did a lot of work for us. And we basically always had Avros and Hearthguard, and it also did a lot of work. So, like, these two cards were pretty awesome in the middle, uh, the middle turns. Pretty cool deck. I like it a lot. So there we go. So there's Avros and Fury. Um, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. If you try it out yourself, how does it go for you? Or, you know, anything else like that, I'd appreciate it. But thank you so much for watching. Some Averroes and Fury, and I'll see you for the next video.